The device you're using right now to watch this video plays psychological tricks on you every single day. But a lot of you know this, especially because over the past couple of months, people have been talking a lot about The Social Dilemma, which is a Netflix documentary that explores the consequences of our growing dependence on social media. I saw this news clip that said this documentary unveils the psychological manipulation used by tech companies and social media. Information collected online may be used to influence our actions in real life. And I was like, I made a pretty similar documentary documentary two years ago. If some of you have subscribed to this channel for a couple of years, you may remember Attention Wars, which I made it with Screen Australia and PBS. And if you thought The Social Dilemma was disturbing, buckle up, because here's what it didn't tell you. The impact of technology and social media on our psychology and society goes way deeper than you might expect. This episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream in partnership with the creator-owned streaming service Nebula. So there are lots of reports about social media making us sad or depressed because we compare ourselves to everyone else's beautiful lives or we have a fear of missing out. But what if there's more to our emotional experience? There's a lot of tools tech companies can make use of to figure out how you feel. The words you use and your typing speed can be analyzed to determine your feelings. The accelerometer in your phone captures how your phone moves. The microphone can listen for background noise. And this data paints a picture of your emotional state. What happens when you go on Facebook or when you go on YouTube is that you've got this hidden to you artificial intelligence machine that's like, what will I show her that will make her stay here? Right, that's what it's figuring out. And as humans, we have emotions and they're important to us. And depending on how you're feeling, ads and content can be served to you at just the right time to keep you interested. This is called mood targeting. The New York Times, ESPN and USA Today all have ad products that they say can use artificial intelligence to predict the emotional response content evokes and then match ads to that mood. But Facebook, being Facebook, took this concept in an ethically questionable direction. In 2014, in what I'll call the Facebook experiment, we found out the company had experimented with more than 600,000 people. So we know that moods like happiness or depression can be contagious. Your mood can influence others in person. So Facebook wondered, can the same thing happen online? The researchers randomly selected users and controlled the number of positive and negative posts that appeared in their newsfeed. When the researchers reduced positive posts, those people then posted fewer positive things and more negative things. And then when people saw less negative posts, they posted less negative things and more positive things. So it appears that, yeah, the emotions expressed by others on Facebook can influence our own emotions. Emotional states are contagious online too. When the results of this experiment were published, people had a lot of questions. Like, was it ethical to induce sadness across a population that most certainly included people at risk of depression or suicide? Although this was just an experiment, three years later, The Australian published a leaked document from two Facebook executives on mood targeting in advertising. Using pictures and reactions and posts, they collected data on the emotional state of six million young people, many of them teenagers, to find moments when young people need a confidence boost. Of course, it is common knowledge among young people that Facebook is the least cool of all social media platforms. But beyond Facebook, there are hundreds of patterns for emotion sensing technology, some of them so creepy that hopefully they never see the light of day. While this is directly monetizing our emotions and attention, other manipulation is more subtle, kind of like a side effect of us using technology. Our use and reliance on technology can push our brain into various modes of thinking. And after being in these modes for too long, it may be difficult to break out. One of these problematic habits of thinking has been called distraction sickness, where we just can't sustain our attention on a task, an analog task, perhaps. One survey showed the percentage of American adults who read literature fell to at least a three-decade low in 2015. 
Researchers said one explanation is that there are more platforms competing for our attention than ever before. And the downside of distraction sickness is that because our attention is fragmented in so many places, we are never truly bored. Our mind never switches off. And boredom can have benefits. The great thing about boredom is that in fact it's one of the moments when your brain reconfigures itself and it creates unexpected connections, it is room for creativity and thinking, and it turns out that's actually really important for our mental health as well as our ability to think up new things. Of course, many things can change how our brain functions. But the real question is that if technology changes our behaviour over time, can that change you as a person? As much as our reliance on social media and technology can be alarming, I do need to address the obvious, which is I have built my career using these platforms, mainly on YouTube because I can never remember to post on Instagram. Many of us, including you, have benefited from what social media can offer, and a lot of content, just like The Social Dilemma, doesn't acknowledge these benefits. The same methods that make apps addictive, the notifications, the nudges, the swiping, the sounds and vibrations, can be used for good. They help you learn new languages on Duolingo or meditate in calm. You can endlessly swipe right or left in fine shadow, an app for finding lost dogs and returning them to their humans. And I spend a lot of time watching and enjoying educational videos on YouTube. And because of this benefit to me, I don't want these internet services to go away completely. Which is why when we're talking about solutions, the argument of delete your accounts is never completely effective. A lot of solutions to the impact of social media rely on personal steps. You can remove the triggers, like turning off push notifications. And you can reduce your ability to use time-sucking apps. You can delete the ones you don't need or put your phone out of reach. But others say the companies behind social media apps should be held more accountable. You know, the handful of companies that control the infrastructure of the internet. Or that internet services should be considered a public utility, like electricity or transportation. Look, there isn't a perfect solution, but there is a consensus that some things need to change. You know, we always look back later and say, how was it that we allowed that to happen? We just let ourselves sit there, you know, uh, lying in bed, scrolling through whatever screens, and like, wait, why didn't I get any sleep? <laughs> what happened? Where did my kids go? You know, I think that uh, we're going to regret some of the periods of this era, but I think we have the capacity to learn and do better. I do have some more advice on how you can change your behaviour to be less distracted by your phone and to focus more on what matters. It's all in my new series, which is like a magazine advice column for the internet that's being released right now on a new streaming platform called Nebula. Nebula is owned by a bunch of YouTube creators. It's kind of like an expansion pack to YouTube, and it also features originals from Up and Atom, Tom Scott, and Legal Eagle. My series, Questionable Advice, was made with the support of Curiosity Stream, the subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles. Curiosity Stream loves small independent creators and wants to help Nebula grow, so they're offering Braincraft viewers free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com braincraft. You'll have access to thousands of big budget documentaries and you'll get to watch original content from lots of educational YouTubers, including questionable advice. So click the link below to get both CuriosityStream and Nebula for just $14.79 a year, which is 26% off. I memorized those very specific numbers, so please follow the link. <laughs>